Hey friends, we are on week 13. So here's what we learned today. Um, we started with, or we'll start with math. Um, this was super helpful to me. I don't know if any of you have ever seen this before, but this was an anomaly. So excited. Um, okay, so we learned today that eight fluid ounces equals one cup, two cups equals one pint, two pints equals one quart, four quarts equals one gallon. This visual for me was helpful. I kind of want to put it on my fridge and I might. Um, two cups, so these little C's are inside of a pint. So one, or let's back up. Eight fluid ounces equals one cup. Two cups equals one pint. So there's your P for pint. Two pints equals one quart. So there's your Q. And four quarts equals one gallon. So for me, that visual was super easy. Um, easy to remember. Um, I also showed the kids this. Eight fluid ounces equals one cup. Two cups equals one pint. So we held that up. Two pints equals one quart. And we held that up. And four quarts equals one gallon. So that was a good way for them to see it in action. Um, so that's what we did for math. Um, Latin, we're all the way back to the very first um, Latin exercise that we did with Latin noun cases. Um, for those of you that weren't with us week one, I'll tell you why we're doing these movements really quickly. For the rest of you, it will be review. We did nominative subject, nominative subject. So that's repeated twice. And for genitive possessive, we reached into our genes, genitive, and we pulled out our possession. So genitive possessive, genitive possessive. For dative, we said it was bright. It was daytime, so it was bright outside. So dative, and then we said indirect object dative, indirect object. Um, accusative, we put up our dukes because we're going to accuse someone of something, accusative, and then we're going to hit a direct object. So accusative, direct object, accusative, direct object. For ablative, um, it sounds like blah, 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 blah. So we say ah, uh, blah, 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 blah. Ablative, and then we make an O at the bottom, object of the preposition. Um, so that was a review for most of us, for a few families that weren't with us the first week that is new to you. Um, let's go over here. Um, for science, we found, I found a really fun song on CC Connected. Um, it's like rock and roll. I'll send it to the mamas. Um, the parts of the geosphere are core, mantle, crust, hydrosphere, biosphere, and atmosphere. So first I just showed them that the core is in the middle. Um, and then for mantle, we covered it. For crust, we took a bite. And then for hydrosphere, that's talking about the water, so we did this. For biosphere, that's like people, trees. So we just stood up straight like a tree. And then for atmosphere, we pointed to the sky and jumped. So it says, what are the parts of a geosphere? Core, mantle, crust, hydrosphere, biosphere, atmosphere, and then it repeats. Um, but I'll send that to you. That song was really fun. I had a great time rocking out to that one. For English, compound prepositions. So I gave two choices for this one. Um, the first one was to sing it in funny voices to the tune of Happy Birthday. Um, so it sounds like this. Compound prepositions according to, in addition to, except for, in front of, out of, instead of. So we tried that a couple times, but they thought this poem was pretty funny, and some opted to memorize the poem, but I only read it, read it to them a couple times, so if you want me to write this down or send it to you, let me know. So we said, according to Joe, John likes cake. In addition to that, he also owns a snake, except for the time that he let it out in front of a pig who was bit in the snout. Out of the pig came a big squeal. Instead of complaining, he did a cartwheel. And what I would do with them is just have them stand up during the compound preposition. So when we say according to, they have to stand up and then sit back down. Um, so that's the second option for that one. Um, for geography, we did that two ways as well. Um, someone posted this on CC Connected. Um, you can sing it to The Lion Sleeps Tonight. Hello, doggy. Um, so it sounds like this. 
Western Africa, Atlantic Ocean, Cynical River, Niger River, Sahara Desert, Ivory Coast. And then you could do the Awee Awee Moe. Whatever, have fun with it. Um, my kids seem to be too cool to sing <laughs> too many songs. Um, so we used a few hand motions for this and we said our boat is in motion on the Atlantic Ocean. So we just made a boat. Um, then they would draw a boat on the map. Um, Senegal River, we would use our left finger and make kind of a hook because that's the shape that it has. And then Niger River, we would do this because that's the shape that that has. And then the Niger River points down to the Ivory Coast. And then we would circle Ivory Coast. Sahara Desert covers up most and we would just put our hand on the map where the Sahara Desert is because it's pretty large. Um, so those are the two ways that we did geography today. Um, I found that it helps to give them options. <laughs> okay, for, let's do history. History, there's a song on your CD already for this one, talking about the Kush. And we just kind of sang through it and looked at the pictures here to help remember it. This one was easy, they got it pretty quick. Um, the Kush mine gold along the Nile River from 2000 BC to AD 350. The Berbers traded gold, and I just had pictures, gold, iron, and salt in the desert. And we did, like we had them make up some funny hand movements to that, but that was pretty easy. They did the Kush mine gold, and they'd say along the Nile River from 2000 BC to, three, to AD 350. The Berbers traded gold, iron, and salt in the desert. Um, easy song to remember. I'm thankful for that this week. Timeline. Um, let's see here. Prince Henry found... Oh, so we're starting a new timeline. So we're on number three on your CD, Age of Exploration. So we said Age of Exploration, circa 1400 to circa 1600. I didn't do anything for that. If you want to add in um, the movements for that or the hand signs for that you can. They're a little more complex so I just left them out. Prince Henry found the school of navigation so we just made our sign language P, did our banner across our body, Prince Henry found for navigation we made it like a compass, the school of navigation, slave trade in Africa, slave trade so you act like you're bound at the wrists, slave trade and the sign for Africa is this. Um, slave trade in Africa, Gutenberg's printing press. So we make our sign language G, which looks like this, and then you put it down, Gutenberg's printing press. Songhai in Africa, we just make the sign language S, and then we do Africa again. You can do golden, she added that in there too, um, but I'm just gonna do Songhai in Africa. This one has four signs that go with it, so if you get a couple of them, great. Um, Czar Ivan, even though it's pronounced Czar, it starts with a C, so we did Czar and then an I for Ivan, the Great of Russia. You just touch your hips twice. So that was um, a challenging one. Czar Ivan, the Great of Russia. For Spanish Inquisitions, you just make little hooks like X's, put them on your shoulders, and then attach your cape in the front. And then Inquisition is like judgment or um, but it's the same, the same sign for judgment, inquisition. And that was that. So that was our new grammar. Um, we refreshed our board with little uh, scratch off type thingies up there. Um, for art, we did um, Zioto. Uh, we had a lot of fun today because we got to crush up chalk and make a tempera paint. Um, the paint actually turned out really well. I'm kind of thinking that maybe we should just make paint at home from now on because it was pretty easy and extra fun. Um, we learned all about the Earth's tilt and seasons, and we learned about um, sinkers, just how soil settles and the impact that that has. Um, our presentations went well. Obviously, they had to talk about Christmas. Uh, I think it was harder this week to keep them down on time. Normally it's a challenge to get them to speak a full three minutes. Well, some of them, some not so hard. Um, but yeah, they had a great time sharing what they did over Christmas with their families and all the gifts that they received. And it sounds like everyone had a great uh, break. 
we had a great break as well. It was hard to get back in the swing of things this morning, but once we got there, we were smooth sailing. So um, I'm excited to get back at it. Their challenge this week is to review um, this, the second part of timeline. So not the first one, because they've got that pretty well nailed, but the second one. And most of them can sing it all the way through, but they don't remember all the signs. So maybe refer back to some of the old videos for those if they need it. Um, and they're still working on the president's song. A couple of them know it all the way through, which is awesome. So we've got a head start on that. Next week's presentation is on their favorite historical figure. So that can be anyone from history, maybe someone in their family. Um, yeah, anything like that. So go nuts and we'll see you next week.